So in today's video, I want to talk to you about three of the best things that I have done for my back squat in particular in the last kind of three or four months that have tremendously improved the quality of back squat I'm doing, the technique, and for me, like the viability and the long-term benefits of my squat and the long-term progress for my squat. So the three things I'm going to talk about might not necessarily be what you need. They could in fact be the exact opposite of what you need for your back squat but i just want to use it as again like kind of like with the juju video kind of a teaching tool give you some context and real life examples on what parts of your training you could attack to improve your quality of your back squat and these are three that have worked very well for me even after well over a decade of back squatting and someone who already has quite a high level of back squatting as it is i can still massively improve on things in the last kind of Two months, I feel like this is honestly the best my back squat technique has ever been. Obviously, the numbers aren't as high as they've been in the past, but this is definitely the best quality back squat that I've ever had in my squatting career so far. So the first thing that has improved the quality of my back squat is a better coordination of my hips and knees. And we talked a lot about this in the back squat lecture, which is available to view now on YouTube for rent. In this, we kind of talked through the coordination part of strength training sounds kind of like sometimes we think of coordination, we think of it as a lower tier skill or we place the coordination. When we think of coordination, we only think of lower tier skills. So we think of things like tying your shoelaces, although that is difficult for some people, wiping your ass, you know, making a triangle and going up and down like this, some kind of basic rudimentary things. But we don't think about coordination when we think about things like back squats. So we think about coordination of back squat the first couple of weeks of learning to how to high bar squat. And then after that, we kind of forget about it. So coordination and technique are basically the same thing. And for me, the coordination axis of my squat was a little bit too knee dominant and not quite hip dominant enough or rather I should say I wasn't using my hips appropriately or as well as I could have been so most of the time for the last couple of years I would have favored a heavy forward knee travel in my squat with the emphasis on loading my quads as much as possible without actually considering where my hips were going in the squat uh, so this kind of came about the ability to use my hips better in the squat was a couple of months ago you would have seen I was going through some knee rehab and the particular exercise recommended in knee rehab by Aaron Horstig in his book and on some of his videos and from Aaron himself was a single leg touchdown squat where you heavily emphasize rearward travel of your hips and very little forward knee travel in this type of pistol or single leg touchdown as he calls them kind of as pistols you'd be forward knee travel heavily with a lot of emphasis on that so in these it was a lot of rearward hip travel and learning how to use your glutes and kind of emphasizing some kind of uh better mind muscle connection I suppose essentially what would happen with this kind of touchdown and so when I went squatting I continued to use forward knee travel and heavily emphasize my squat but at the same time I emphasized rearward hip travel in the squat at the same time so when I was squatting what I started thinking about in the last couple of weeks was my knees would break forward but at the same time my hips would travel backwards in the squat at the same time and it's given me much better coordination much better loading what would often happen sometimes is my knees would travel very far forward as i have optimal leverages for squatting while also having uh, very good ankle mobility so this is actually bring the bar out of position the bar would travel too far forward it would bring my hips too far forward as well and sometimes you'd actually see a little bit of a butt wink in my squat which obviously is not something you'd ever want to be aiming for and it's not always ideal so with this better coordination it allows me to keep my lower back in a better position keep my upper body as well in a better position and these traveled inappropriately so as i go down i still emphasize that forward knee travel and my rearward hip travel in the squat and this allows me to keep my upper back much tighter and it keeps me more even distribution it keeps that bar going straight down which is what we're always looking for so a straighter bar pad in the squat and it keeps me in a better position on the way up so i can feel a better tightness in my back so the second thing then would follow us on from this so as i mentioned that some of the single leg touchdowns was something that i was training to improve my coordination uh, the actual training of these muscles was important to improve that mind-muscle connection. So training them outside of the actual squat itself, with, so with primarily with these single leg touchdowns. So this was to give me a heavy emphasis and a better connection with my hips and putting them in a better position. And then training the smaller muscles individually unloaded with varying heights on the single leg touchdowns. So this gave me a better capacity to train these muscles independently so they would have actually gotten productive 
training time on the floor as opposed to in a heavy back squat where other things like my quad dominance or my upper back might have taken over uh, prematurely and not given them enough time to adequately adapt to this new kind of coordination so these single leg touchdowns were very very useful the way i went about essentially training these was initially they were introduced as a rehab exercise for my knees which then i progressed them up into certain heights across the training period of plates so it increased so i originally started with one kilo plate or one 20 kilo plate and then eventually progressed this to three or four plates so you want you approximately get about a foot off the ground and this is near enough that you will have most of the benefit for these what they're aiming for then was a heavy glute pump essentially when doing these for four to five sets of eight each leg and this kind of emphasized the use of my hips and glute musculature better gave me better intuition with them gave me a better feeling of how they should kind of be coordinated and this kind of then led to that better coordination a better action in this coordination when i'm doing the back squat now for a lot of you this might not actually be useful for you this might not be something you need to do but i'm just giving you some context and thinking about breaking down the different areas and looking deeper into your back squat and certain parts of it and what might need to be brought up the third area then, and this is probably one of the most productive things I've done for all of my lifting, especially my snatch and my clean and jerk, but it's very, very been very, very noticeable in the back squat. And that is me training uh, with high frequency, my upper and lower back, the uh, approximately three to four times a week. So mostly what I've been doing is I jerry-rigged a kind of ghetto hips belt or duck belt where I was able to rose, uh, loaded this up quite heavy, and also then very very heavy barbell rows so why i liked both of these right is while your lower back acts as an isometric muscle and your upper back responds better to actual rowing motions through a full range of motion in actual lifts in the snatch the clean and jerk and the squats your back ends up as a full unit acting as an isometric muscle However, then when you're training this, I think it's important to train both parts separately as moving your lower back to your range of motion is not productive. It's probably not safe and it won't give you a huge amount of adaption. So you need to be training your lower back in an isometric position, whereas your upper back doesn't respond particularly well or there's a more productive way of training your upper back and that is with rowing. So heavy barbell rows, a little bit of English, approximately at the moment, I'm doing about two barbell rows a week and two ghetto rows a week. At the moment, gyms are open as well, so uh, infrequently I will do some heavy T-bar rows if I can get access to them, or any other machine rows, single arm or double arm rows. And this is, I really like the barbell rows from below the knee with some heavy body English because it allows your lower back to be trained like an isometric as when you're dropping that barbell down below your knees, you're in a fairly strong isometric position and you're resisting that motion and it feels very, very productive for your lower back. And then of course the rowing motion is very, very useful for your lats, mid traps, thoracic, uh, giving you some kind of positive adaption there. It's not something I would have actively trained an awful lot before, but at the moment I'm really attacking it and I'm really feeling the benefits of it. So when I am doing my back squat and I'm, when I'm thinking about forward knee travel and rearward hip travel in the squat, what I can really feel is strong tension in my lower and mid back. And I can feel that position maintaining more rigid and a better position, allowing me to stay more upright and then appropriately use my lower body and my upper body better as a whole unit to squat better quality weights which is something that i'm very very pleased about something i'm always trying to think about how to do better so that back training while also very useful for my snatch my clean and jerk is also very very useful and i can really feel the transfer over into my squat as well now i don't really recommend you attacking your upper and back training four to five times a week but certainly something to think about you might have the exact opposite problem of me and it's very very possible you might be in a position where your glutes are well developed and your coordination is high. Your back is very, very strong, but you lack adequate, ad, adequate, adequate, you whack, you whack adequate. You lack adequate quad development or you lack coordination with your quads in the lift and you heavily favor a hip swing backwards. You might have weak adductors, weak abductors. You might have a whole host of issues, very, very weak core musculature. You might have poor upper back mobility and you can't get into a strong and rigid position. So rather than being too focused on what I've done, although it is useful to think about it because you may have those issues, try thinking about where areas you might be lacking and attack these with some tenacity, not the full I've enduring tenacity every single day, but with a certain amount of tenacity where you need to bring them up to a certain level of kind of, of proficiency whereby it will help your squat. So obviously squatting is the main driver of my squats. This is to improve the quality of my squats rather than the absolute weight. I really hope you found this useful. 
Uh, it's something I'm very, very happy about. I love thinking about my training and how can I make things better all the time. So I hope you've learned something from this. Oh, yeah.